Linear regulators are some of the lowest cost and easiest to use power supplies in modern electronics. Relying on just a few components to function, these devices play a crucial role in providing a low noise, cost-effective voltage supply. In today's video, we are going to learn all about the linear regulator, including how it works, what applications it's used for, and other important concepts you need to know before you start working with them. But before we go any further, feel free to check out the description. There will be some links that you may find helpful. And with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So first, a little background on the linear regulator. The linear regulator gets its name from the control mechanism that it uses to regulate the output voltage. The way it works is essentially a variable resistance element, such as a transistor, is used in its linear region to create a precise voltage drop across it, which results in some desired voltage on the output side. One important thing to note is that linear regulators can only be used as step-down converters, meaning they take a higher input voltage and step it down to a lower output voltage. So there is no way to use a linear regulator as a step-up converter. A good analogy is to think of it like a valve controlling the flow of water. We are not just turning the water supply all the way on or all the way off, like in the case with a switch mode power supply, but rather we are finally adjusting the flow rate of the water to get a precise water pressure on the output, which in this case represents our output voltage. This means there is no switching on like with a traditional switch mode power supply, which gives us the benefit of not having to deal with the noise caused by that rapid switching action. However, a drawback is that we no longer reap the efficiency benefits of the switch mode power supply. And we will cover this in more detail later on in the video. One of the most common types of linear regulators that exist today is known as the low dropout or LDO linear regulator. In a linear regulator, the term dropout refers to the minimum required difference between the input voltage and the output voltage in order for the regulator to properly function. This dropout requirement is primarily due to the voltage drop that occurs when the transistor is operating in saturation mode, aka it is all the way completely turned on. We will talk more about this when we get to the theory of operations. For an LDO, there really isn't a traditional power stage like you might see with some other switch mode power supply topologies, such as a buck converter or a flyback converter. As I mentioned earlier, the primary component that is doing all the work is just one single transistor. It is pretty common to see both input and output capacitors on linear regulators, and this is just to prevent any signal noise from disrupting the operation of the linear regulator, and also to improve the regulator's transient response, such as an abrupt change to the input voltage or some type of transient on the load. Besides that, there are no other key components in the circuit. When thinking about the theory of operations of an LDO, I think it's best to view it like a variable resistor whose resistance changes based on the amount of current that we want to flow through the load. Let's take a look at this example simulation where we have a PNP transistor that is connected to a 5 volt source. Now, if you're not familiar with how a transistor works, I have another video that, that talks about that topic in great detail, and it will be linked in the description. Basically, we are using R1 to control the amount of current flowing through the load, and then Ohm's law will dictate the voltage drop across our load. For example, if we want to convert 5 volts to 3.3 volts, and we know our load resistance is 10 ohms, then we know that we need to allow 330 milliamps of current to flow through that load in order to get a voltage drop of 3.3 volts across it. It's important to note that Kirchhoff's voltage law will always apply, so the total voltage drop across the entire circuit will equal to zero. This means the greater the difference between the input voltage and the output voltage, the greater the voltage drop across the transistor has to be. This is a very important concept to understand because it affects the power dissipation and efficiency of the LDO. The amount of power that the LDO dissipates is equal to the voltage drop across it times the current flowing through it. 
which will always be the same as the amount of current flowing through the load. Let's look at an example to illustrate this point. Here we have five volts being converted to 3.3 volts. And in another example, we have 6.4 volts being converted to 3.3 volts. The load currents are the same in both of these scenarios. However, in the case of the 6.4 volt supply, the linear regulator will have half of the efficiency as the scenario with the five volt supply due to the additional 1.7 volts being dropped across it. This is why it is very common to see linear regulators used used in applications where the input voltage is already very close to the output voltage. It allows us to get all of the benefits of the linear regulator without the negative drawbacks of poor efficiency and poor thermal performance. Okay, so now I want to answer some frequently asked questions that I get about linear regulators. First question is, when should a linear regulator be used? So typically we see linear regulators used when you need to provide a very low noise voltage supply to a circuit. For example, you might see an LDO being used to power a microcontroller or an integrated circuit of some kind. These type of circuits use the input voltage to power all of their logical calculations. So it's very important to provide them with a low noise voltage supply because that could disrupt those integrated circuits ability to function. Another benefit of LDOs is they have very small footprints compared to switch mode power supplies. And this is simply due to the fact that they use much fewer components than a traditional switch mode power supply might. So LDOs could be used when you don't have a lot of board space available. I also wanna mention one case where LDOs are typically not used, and that is when your input voltage is substantially higher than your output voltage, or whenever you have to supply a large amount of current to your load. The reason for both of these cases simply comes down to efficiency. Because of their mechanism of operation, LDOs are not really intended to handle high currents or to step down a very high input voltage down to a much lower output voltage. The amount of power the LDO has to dissipate just gets far too high for the small package to be able to handle. So you won't often see LDOs that are rated for substantial amounts of current or that can handle a huge drop from input voltage to output voltage. So just to sum it up, LDOs really shine in environments where the power draw is low, the board space is minimal, and you need a super clean supply voltage. As you progress in your career as an electrical engineer, you will see that there are actually a lot of scenarios that fit this description. So that's why it's pretty common to see LDOs in a lot of designs. The next question I often hear is, are there any other types of linear regulators that we should be familiar with? The short answer is yes, but they're just not as common as the LDO. There used to be what is referred to as the standard linear regulator, meaning it was just a linear regulator, except it didn't have the super low dropout feature that modern LDOs have. They served pretty much the exact same function as, as the modern LDO, except they just had worse efficiency. So you can probably see why they're not nearly as common as modern LDOs are. You might still find some in some much older designs, but for the most part, LDOs is what you'll be working with. There is also another type of linear regulator I want to mention, and it is known as the shunt regulator. Shunt regulators are very interesting because as far as I am aware, they are mainly just used to provide reference voltages, and they're not really intended to be used as power supplies. One of the most common applications that I've seen shunt regulators used in is for some type of isolated power supply, such as a flyback converter. You'll see them on the secondary side to provide a reference voltage to help regulate our output. It's a very interesting application and we will actually be doing a separate video specifically on that topic, but I just wanted to get you kind of introduced to the shunt regulator in this video. And that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you so much if you made it to the end and hopefully I will see you in the next one.